بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Oh, you who believe fair Allah that it should be feared and do not die except in the state of Islam, except that you are Muslims. Ya ayuhal ladhina, ya ayuhal nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhu ma rijalan kathira wa nisaa wa attaqu Allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba O mankind, fear your guardian Lord who created you from a single soul from that he created his mate and from them came many men and women. So fear Allah from whom you demand your mutual rights and respect the wombs that bore you. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu taqu allaha wa aqoolu qawlan sadeeda. Yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. Wa man yuti'i allaha wa rasoolahu faqad faaza fawzan azima. O you who believe fear Allah, you should be... F- o you who believe fear Allah and say a word that is directed to the truth. Say a good word, say a correct word. That he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may rectify your deeds and forgive your sins. Indeed, whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger وسلم, has indeed attained a great success. أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. And after which follows the best speech is the book of Allah, the Quran, and the best example. The best guidance is the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the worst of the affairs are the newly invented matters. For every newly invented matter is an innovation, and every innovation is a misguidance. Every innovation in the deen is a misguidance, and every misguidance leads to the fire. Today we're going to look at a verse in Surah Nur, verse fifty-five. About 15 years ago, after Shaykh Rabbi Hafizullah had moved to Mecca, after he had resided in Medina, and we would visit him in Medina prior to that to see him in his house in Awali, and he was teaching 40 hadith in his house, and then he moved to Mecca. It was glad tidings for us living in Jeddah before we moved to Medina. Glad tidings. Because Jeddah to Mecca is only one hour drive. Ni'mah! Allahumma barik! Shaykh Rabbi bin Hadi al-Madkhi. An imam from the imams is going to live in Mecca. Allahumma barik! We were so happy being in Jeddah, one hour drive. Ni'mah! And that ni'mah, the people... The people of knowledge know that ni'mah. That's why the scholars recognized him as being, uh, as being beneficial from the people of knowledge. Imam in the times of the imams. Naam. In the times of the imams. Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah. Shaykh ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah. Naam. Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz rahimahullah. They recognized Shaykh Rabi as being an imam in their time. Fakayf al-an. So how is it now? And he started teaching Sharia of Al-Ajurri. Imam Al-Ajurri. Books of the Salaf. Reviving the books of the Salaf. And he started teaching also Ba'ath Al-Hadith in Mustalah Al-Hadith. Because the Ahl Al-Bid'a, innovators, they try to come from different angles. They come from the Arabic language, they are refuted. They come from Usul Fiqh, by that way, they are refuted by the scholars of Ahl Sunnah in Usul Fiqh. They come from also from Mustalah Hadith. Huh? And they try to miss. And so he's teaching us going through Ba'ith al Hadith. And he's refuting the innovators by way of Mustalah al Hadith. How beautiful these great scholars are. From any angle, they are closing the door to Bid'ah. From all angles, clarifying to you the Sunnah. They are the Warathatul Anbiya. 
they are the inheritors of the prophets. Inna al-anbiya lam yuwarithu dinaran wala darhaman walakin warathu al-ilm faman akhadha akhadha bihaddin wafir the prophets, messengers, they don't leave behind dinars, not dirhams. They leave behind knowledge. Whoever gains it, gains a great treasure. And also he was teaching Fath al-Majid, Sharh Kitab al-Tawheed, Allahu Akbar, Tawheed, importance of Tawheed. And he was doing that on Thursday after Asr. The weekends for the next three years were the best, one of the best three years. One of the best weekends. Because he got ulama. فَأَسْنَدَ رُكْبَتَيْهِ لَرُكْبَتَيْهِ And he put his knees with his knees. وَضْعَ كَفَّيْ عَلَى فَخِذَيْهِ This is how the talab al-ilm is. The manner of talab al-ilm, of the talib al-ilm, is that he put his knees with his knees. إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمِ بِالتَّلَقِّي Knowledge is by gaining it, acquiring it. As Shaykh Abayil Hafid Allah said, the hadith of Jibreel is the manner of the Talib al-Ilm. The teacher was Rasulullah sallallahu But Jibreel asked the questions. He was a reason for the teaching to be conducted. And for the instruction to occur. As Shaykh Uthaymi rahmatullah said. So here, here Shaykh Rabbi Hafizullah was teaching aqidah, was teaching hadith. No. And then he came to Jeddah for lectures. He used to come regularly. Whenever there was an opportunity, he would come. And he came to Hay al Jami'ah. Hay al Jami'ah. Masjid Amir Mit'ib. Shari' Ba Khashab. Uh, to you, it's like any other street. But this is the venue. This street is the venue. Because this street here is where the Hizbiyun used to gather. And they used to call to their bid'ah. So Shaykh Rabbi now come into that area to refute the Hizbiyin, the partisan groups. After many years, after they delayed the da'wah in the 90s, after the Gulf War, they caused so much havoc and chaos and caused so much, so many people to leave the ulama because of their dazzling speech. min al-sihr la bayan. إِنَّ مِنَ الْبَيَانِ لَسِحْرَ حديث البخاري that indeed from speech is magic. They dazzle in speech, they misguide many. Away from the ulama, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, who are known. And so he came to this masjid, which is general masjid, masjid for the people, doesn't belong to the Hizbiyun. It's a general masjid, general. But the Hizbiyun, the partisan groups have already done a lot of damage there. And the likes of Safar, Salman and others. They used to use, get newspapers and start reading to the people the news was going on around the world. And to get the people emotionally charged. This is their da'wah. Huh? Get the people emotionally charged. Like they have with marches. Get the people emotionally charged. Did it benefit anyone? Did you know how to worship Allah better after the march? No. Did you get to the masjid? Did you pray during... The other day they said they went to the mosque, they didn't even pray their salah. Huh? They're missing their salah, they're mixing and they... Did it benefit? Bid'ah does not bring benefit. Kullu bid'atin dalala. Every bid'ah is misguidance, as the Rasulullah said. And Abdullah ibn Umar anhu explained it. I'm going to take his explanation because Sahabi... He said, Kullu bid'atin dalala wa in ra'aha nasu hasana. Every bid'ah is misguidance even if the people see it as good. Ah, that means there's no bid'ah hasana. Bid'ah hasana, the, his, the partisan groups, they say bid'ah hasana. Nuhamin Keller writes a whole article. Ah, he says, Kul in the Arabic does not mean all. It means most. That means there's still some that's good, that's good bid'ah. We say to him, Thanks, but no thanks. We don't need your explanation. We have Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. And he said, Kullu bid'atin dalala. Wa in ra'aha nasu hasana. Even if the people see it as good. And we have Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu who said, Count your sins when they thought they were doing good with the stones in a, in a gathering saying, Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. In a gathering, in unison, 
making dhikr of Allah, so-called dhikr of Allah. Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, count your sins. Uddu sayyatikum. Ma aradna illa khaira ya, 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 ya Aba Abdul Rahman. We did not intend but good. Ah, good bid'ah. Huh? We didn't intend but good. And, and Abdullah bin Mas'ud, from the elders of the Sahaba, rather, from the early Sahaba, what did he say? Kam muridin lil khayri lam yudrikhu aw lam yusibhu. How many people intend good but don't reach it? So we have Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, from the elders of the Sahaba. We have Abdullah ibn Umar, saying all bid'ah is evil. And all of it is misguidance. And the reason why I told you this background is because Shaykh Rabbi Hafidullah in this gathering is going to talk about this verse. Allah. Let me say, why we chose this verse? Surat Nur verse 55. Because we have been preceded by Ahl al-Ilm. They chose this verse in order to explain da'wah al-Salafiyyah. And they chose the verse before it and the verse after it. And the title was, وَإِن تُطِيعُهُ تَهْتَدُ And if you obey the Messenger وسلم, you will be guided. And that's the verse just before it. And it covers the next verse and the verse after. وَإِن تُطِيعُهُ تَهْتَدُ Where Shaykh Rabbi Hafidullah showed the importance of obeying the Rasul Verse after verse. أَطِيعُ اللَّهُ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ uh, obey Allah and obey the messengers وسلم, and those in authority over you أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول ولا تولوا عنه وأنتم تسمعون obey Allah and obey the messengers وسلم, and don't turn away from him while you hear والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله uh, the believers male and female they are friends and protectors of each other what do they do first? They enjoin the good. And they forbid the evil. What good is they enjoin? Shaykh Abay said, Tawheed first. And they forbid the evil. What is the severest of evil they forbid? A shirk. And thereafter, bid'ah. You always talk about bid'ah, brothers. You always talk about Tawheed. And sh- yes, they enjoin the good. And they forbid the evil. This is the characteristics of the believers. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ الله أكبر This is the da'wah of the anbiya. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ وَحَوْ كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ The best ummah have come out for mankind. تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ You enjoy the good and you forbid the evil. It's not mishmash da'wah. Everyone and anyone. Da'wah to Salafiyyah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting it. And it is blessed da'wah. It is aided da'wah. And it's getting stronger and stronger as the years you, with the help of Allah first. And then with the ulama. The ulama of Ahl sunnah You can see it spreading and spreading. And Allah is behind it. And he is al-qawi. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa 23 years. And he is coming and da'wah to Salafiyah spread far and wide. The ulama who are patient and they have yaqeen, they're not moved, they're not shaken in calling to Tawheed and Sunnah. They don't turn to any slogans or claims or dazzling speech. They are focused. وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَةٌ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُولَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ They are focused. He drew a line, straight line. It wasn't wiggly. Nor was it hilly, Shaykh Ibn Uthaymi says. It is the shortest line. It wasn't crooked, nor was it hilly. Not even hilly, subhanAllah. It's straight and flat. And don't follow the other paths, the short paths. They will lead you away from his path. Those short paths at the end of every one is a devil, a shaitan calling towards it. Don't follow that path. Dazzling speech. Come brother, come to the march. Come brother, 40 days. Come brother. Come let's everyone and anyone. Come brother. Come let's mix and match with everyone. With all these misguided groups. Oh, they always talk about, oh they're harsh. Oh, these ones are the... Huh? 
and they make slogans against who? Against ulama. Past 25 years in this country, that was, mashallah, Allah mubarak from those who established it. That has been going forward. It hasn't looked back. What we were then, in the 90s, is what we are now. No change, except that, mashallah, tabarakallah, na'am, better connection with the, even more connection with the ahlul ilm. Na'am, even strengthened connection with, with, with the ulama. Those then, who swayed and strayed, is because they left the ulama. So Shaykh Rabi in this venue, in Jeddah, gave this talk. Which we have already translated. And it's available. It's available in Markaz Mu'ad. In Slough. But today we'll just deal with some aspects of it. And we'll look at some of the tafsir. And the verse 55 is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For who? For Ahl al-Tawheed wa sunnah وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيْسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيْمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ وَالَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَيْبَدِّنَنَّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا Allah's promise is to amongst those who believe and do righteous deeds. Notice he said مِنْكُمْ He didn't say all of you will get the promise. Huh? مِنْكُمْ Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he called to Tawheed and Sunnah and he died in prison. And he died upon, upon that path, the blessed path. Sheikh Sa'i Fawzan says, it's not a must that your da'wah, if it's correct, to be accepted in your lifetime. If it is haq, sooner or later it will be accepted and Allah will bless it. It's not about numbers, ikhwa. If there's one follower, two followers, few followers, it was never about numbers. Few of my slaves are grateful. You will not find most of people if you try to find them as true believers. So it's not about numbers. It's about haq. Futile things will always perish. It's about truth. That you are upon Tawheed and Sunnah. That you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that you are following the Rasul sallallahu Unconditionally. Uncompromisingly. Following the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah's promise is to amongst those who believe. Notice he said believe. They have the correct belief. They, in, they concern themselves with the six beliefs. In detail, with tafsil, learning the aqeedah of Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah. Not like the Hizbi, you and the partisan groups who say you can learn aqeedah in 10 minutes. That's your aqeedah. Not the aqeedah of Ahl al-Sunnah. That's your aqeedah. 10 minutes? So why did the A'imma spend all those years writing those volumes discussing and refuting the misguided groups and those who strayed? Khawarij! They used to memorize, they used to worship the nights, they used to pray the, the days. تَحْقِرُوا أَوْ يَحْقِرُوا أَحَدُكُمْ صَلَاةَ يَحْقِرُوا صَلَاتَكُمْ إِلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ وَصِيَامَكُمْ إِلَى صِيَامِهِمْ You will consider your prayer deficient compared to their prayer and your fasting deficient to their fasting. What is it that they had problem with? Aqeedah. They had a problem with their belief was corrupt. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's why he said about them, the dogs of the hellfire. Their aqeedah is corrupt. They ask about the, the blood of the mosquito, and yet they kill Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu. You see, their faham is upside down. Their understanding is warped, like the khawarij of today. Understanding upside down. Hudatha'ul asnan, sufaha'ul ahlam. Foolish in their dreams. Young in their teeth. You see them. 17, 18, doesn't know who he is, what he is, where he is. Just going with everyone that calls. Not upon the correct understanding. Faham is salaf. Faham, the understanding of the pious predecessors. Of rectification. Tasfiya wa tarbiya. Rectification and education. Tasfiya, purification. And tarbiya, cultivation, education. 
Where do we get that from? It's just two words that somebody, uh, somebody just made up. This is something we, this is established in the seer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's established in the Quran. يعلمكم الكتابة ويزكيكم Teaching you the book and, to, and purifying you. This is the way of the Anbiya. That they teach you the book and they teach you also purification. And not only that, Allah, Allah's Messenger وسلم, himself, when he heard the man say, MashaAllah, wa shi'ta ya Rasulullah, what Allah willed and you willed, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet didn't, leave, didn't just leave him, say that it doesn't matter, we're all Muslims. Ma'alesh. No, he said to him, Have you made me a partner with Allah? This is tasfiya, purification of this deen from shirk, from bid'ah, from all distortions and superstitions. And then he did the tarbiyah, education. قُلْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ You see the da'wah of Rasulullah Sallam? Tasfiya wa tarbiya. Who mentioned this? Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah. Great Imam, Muhaddith, rahimahullah. Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah. The beloved. The one who said about Shaykh Rabir that we re- 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 mentioned some of his benefits today. He said about him, uh, the one who's holding the flag of Jarhu Ta'deel, of knowing the men. When Shaykh Ibn Uthaymi was asked about Sayyid Qutb, he said, go to Shaykh Rabi' because he has written on, the, on him. And Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz with his own handwriting, asking Shaykh Rabi' please check this individual. Subhanallah, Ahlul Fadl, the people of knowledge and virtue, they know who the people of knowledge are. Wa'ad Allahu ladina amanu minkum wa'amilu salihat. It's not enough to have the correct aqidah. You have to follow it up with Amal salih with righteous actions, following up what you know of tawheed, righteous actions, keeping up the salah, the siyam, keeping up that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated you with. Naam, an amal salih would not be amal salih unless it's according to the sunnah. And it's upon ikhlas. Shaykh Ubaid Abdul said that actions will not be accepted unless they. Fulfill two conditions. Ikhlas and ittiba'. Sincerity and it's according to the sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala." So to mulk, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala." Allah created different life to test you, those who do correct deeds. He didn't say many deeds. أَكْثَرَ amala." And for Dayl ibn Uyad, it was said to him, Ya Aba Ali, wa ma ahsanu amala, and what is correct deeds? He said, Ma kana akhlasuhu wa aswabu. That the correct deeds are those which are sincere and according to the, and correct. They said, Wa ma akhlasuhu ma aswabu. What is sincere and correct then? What does it mean? Ma kana akhlasuhu lillah wa aswabu ittiba'an li Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what correct deeds, correct deeds, Sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincere to Allah. And according to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sunnah. According to his way. That's correct deed. And they're the deeds that will be accepted by Allah. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّ أَحَدًا Again, end of source, kaf. Correct deeds with ikhlas and ittiba' upon sunnah. So deed that is done without sunnah, that is upon bid'ah, is rejected. Hadith Aisha radiallahu anha, hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, man ahdata fi amrina hada ma laysa minu, fa huwa rad. It's rejected. Whoever introduces. And in, in Sahih Muslim, specific wording, man amila amlan laysa alihi amrina fa huwa rad. Whoever does an action, that which you have not brought, is rejected. So actions that are not upon sunnah, that are done upon bid'ah, they are rejected. There's no good bid'a, they reject it. Wa'ad Allah ladina amanu minkum. And Allah does he go against his promise? Wa'ad Allah. Wa man ahsanu min Allah qila. Who is better than Allah in speech? Wa man ahsanu min Allah haditha. And who is better in Allah in speech? Allah speaks the truth. Naam. Naam, Allah speaks the truth. In his speech, nobody, his speech is not like the speech of creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks when he wills. To whomsoever he wills, and he says what he wills, befitting his great majesty. It is from his attributes and his actions that he says what he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's from sifat. 
And this is why Imam Ahmad rahimahullah stood firm to defend that great aqidah point. Aqidah comes first if only we knew. If only we knew how heavy aqidah is. It's heavy. It's heavy, O Ahl Sunnah. Don't compromise aqidah. Don't compromise manhaj, your methodology in implementing the aqidah. Don't compromise that. It's heavy on the scales. As Shaykh Rabbi Habudullah said, when you look at the hadith of Bitaqa, the man who's got 99 scrolls of bad deeds, one scroll is as, high, as far as the eyes can see. It's put on the scales. He thinks khalas is destroyed. And the other side, they, a card is brought out from him, for him, written on it, the kalimat al-tawheed. La ilaha illallah. La ma'abuda bihaqqin illallah. And it will outweigh all of those 99 scrolls of bad deed. Tawheed. You see the word Tawheed. Why did you bring Tawheed, they say. Rasulullah mentioned Tawheed. How? Where? In Bukhari, all you have to do is open your eyes and read. We say to the political activists. All you have to do is read and study. Political activists, they become tired of the hadith of Rasulullah they become tired of memorizing and understand because it requires sabr. You want to read the newspaper, you just recline. It doesn't require much. But you want to study the deen of Allah, you study the Quran, tafsir, hadith, before that the Arabic language, hinam, and you study with the ulama, you benefit. So you say to them, the hadith of Mu'ad, radiallahu anhu, Mu'ad ibn al-Jabal, inna kadahibun ila ahli al-kitab, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ You are going to the people of the book. Let the first thing you call them to is شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ That none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. In another word, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ أَنْ يُوَحِّدُ اللَّهِ Allahu Akbar. That they single Allah out in worship. أَنْ يُوَحِّدُ اللَّهِ تَوْح the Messenger Sassim already preceded us in calling to Tawheed and Sunnah. Of course, he is the Messenger of Allah and he is the one that we follow. And all of the Prophets call to Tawheed. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَالسَّنِبُ الطَّاغُوتَ We have ordained, we have sent to every nation a Messenger calling them to worship Allah and to keep away the, uh, from the false deities. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ we will give them the khilaf upon the land just as we gave them uh, to those before them. Khilaf won't come from the orange sticker 20 years ago. For those who don't remember, for those who don't know, 20 years ago, Hizb al-Tahrir, that was before they became Muhajir, and they're all the same, they're all political activists, and they all don't value Tawheed, and they all compromise their deen. 20 years ago, or more. They used to go around and put an orange sticker on some tall lamppost. You think, how on earth did he get up the top there? You know? Sometimes even when you're driving on a motorway, you see an orange sticker on a bridge. You think, how did he get down there? Just as you're passing by the bridge. You think, subhanAllah, this is how your khilafah is. You can't even establish a masjid. More than 20 years of 30 years that they've been here. Any masjid for them? No, alhamdulillah, ahl sunnah They establish masajid. They value the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they know, they know the value of loving the masjid. The best place ever to be. Na'am, wa anna al-masajida, lillah. Fala tadu'u ma'allahi ahada. The masajid for Allah, not for anyone else. For Allah. Where are they? They're in the markets most of the time, doing demonstrations. As for ahl sunnah Naam, Ahl Sunnah. They love the Masajid. Naam. Sabatun Yidhilluhum Allah fi Dhilli. Yaw mala Dhilla illa Dhillu. From them is Rajulun. Kalbuhu Mu'allakum bil Masajid. Qala Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin Rahimuhullah bil Masajid. As soon as he leaves the Masjid, he's, he can't wait to get back. Allahu Akbar. He leaves the Masjid, he can't wait to get back. His heart is inclined with the masajid. It's when, he leave, huh? when we leave, maybe we're thinking about the food, thinking about going there, going here. Huh? But is the first thing we think about is when we're going to get back for the next salah. 
قلبه معلق بالمساجد. And the second meaning that Sheikh Nuraithaim رحمه الله said, he loves sujood, كثرة السجود, much prostration. Allahu Akbar. They have marches, they miss salah. The other day, uh, we saw this uh, short clip. Ah, Siraj Wahaj, Nation of Islam, they, he was given a lecture to the nation, well, amongst them, Nation of Islam. Was it? They go through the whole night. I'm sorry, we forgot to pray Maghrib and Isha, but when you go home, pray when you go home. Uh, all, all night raising money, yeah? for a masjid but you don't even establish the prayer while you're there uh, while you're there in the big gathering subhanallah ajeeb uh, love them and the sunnah love the masajid they don't compromise aqidah they don't compromise salah they love them but which masajid the masajid of ahl sunnah not the masajid where they have magic tricks not that masjid they love masajid of ahl sunnah where there's no compromise and they are in the masjid where there's no splitting and, uh, and bid'ah and masajid for Allah. Masajid where, the, the, where tawheed is upheld the highest. Masajid where the sunnah is established. That's the masajid they love. And that's the masajid they aid. I said, Shaykh Ubaid Havudullah, he said, if I come to England, he said, I'll only go to the masajid of Ahl sunnah Allahu Akbar. That's how we should be. Increasing, he said, the numbers of Ahl sunnah Yes. You want to go to another masjid and uh, upon bid'ah increasing their numbers calling you for to bid'ah. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ لَدِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَّنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ وَالَّذِي ارْتَدَ لَهُمْ And you make their deen firm that which has made established for them. Allah will aid you. Naam. Allah will aid you make your deen firm. Rasulullah Sallallahu himself would ask Allah to make his deen firm. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. The Rasulullah Sallallahu would say in his dua, ah, wa la takilni ila nafsi tarfata ayn. Oh Allah, do not leave me to myself even the blink of an eye. Because a person can easily stray. And Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was taqim, ah, kama umirt. And be firm as you have been commanded. Shaykh Rabbi Habud Allah said, the benefit of that is what? That we also should be firm. Because what he has been commanded with Tawheed and to follow the Sunnah that Allah gave him, we should also follow Tawheed and the Sunnah that he has brought. The Sunnah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتِ إِسْتِقَامًا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَنْ لَا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوعَدُونَ Paradise for those who are firmly established upon Tawheed and Sunnah. Yes. قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Tawheed. قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Tawheed. ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Sunnah. They're upon Sunnah. They're upon Tawheed and Sunnah. That's an angels descend upon them. Don't fear. At the point of death, Ya Abdullah. Alhamdulillah. Ahl sunnah wallahi, they're the happiest people in this life and in the hereafter. Man as'adu nas bi shafa'atik ya Rasulullah. You have asked a question I didn't think anyone will ask before you, O Abu Huraira radiallahu Knowing your hirs that you have. And Imam Bukhari rahimahullah put it in Kitabul Ilm. Hirs, having hirs for knowledge. As'adu nas bi shafa'ati yawm al qiyamah. Man qala la ilaha illallah. Khalisan min qalbi. Sincerely from his heart, he said, La ilaha illallah. He's upon tawheed. He worships Allah alone. He doesn't work, do things for Allah, for other than Allah. He's careful every day, he's checking himself. He doesn't want to spoil his deeds. He want to gain reward. He want to help others for the sake of Allah. Not to be said, Oh, mashallah, he's generous. Oh, mashallah, he's this. He's jawad wa qad qeel. And he'll be thrown into the hell by hadith in Sahih Muslim. Naam. Gain knowledge so that people can say, Oh, he's alim. Wa qad qeel. Wa faqad qeel. And he will be thrown into the hellfire. You have lied. You taught the people to be said that you are knowledgeable or you are this and you are that. And it was said. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Abdullah, we are in serious, in serious situation. And that serious situation is that great meeting we have with Allah. Which is only 
getting closer and closer. What are we going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How are we going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We should be striving, competing, doing our best to gain good deeds upon sincerity. And how many small deeds is raised because of ikhlas? And how many big deeds is reduced? Because the man didn't do it. All of it was not sincere for Allah. Maybe he started out sincere, but in the middle, he, he strayed. We have to be careful. We are in need of Allah. We are in need of reminding each other. He will give you that uh, firmness. Sheikh Rabbi Habudullah said, even if mountains shake, winds rage, earthquakes come, he doesn't move. He doesn't move. Subhanallah. And even he said in his explanation of Kitab al Atisam from Sahih al Bukhari, he said, even if a limb is cut off from your body, he doesn't move. He's firmly established upon Tawheed and Sunnah. That is istiqamah. That is real istiqamah. What the Sahaba عنه, went through. Naam, Bilal had been tortured, been punished until he was set free. Naam, because what? Kalimat al Tawheed, La ilaha illallah. Khabbab, عنه, Hadith in Bukhari, who complained, to the, who said to the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh Messenger of Allah, look what we are in. Ask Allah to remove this uh, affliction from us. Ask Allah to remove this affliction from us. They went through difficulty, hardship. The Prophet said before you was a time a person would be cut into two. A hole would be put in the ground and he would be cut into two. Another would, a metal-like comb would be used to scrape his, his skin off his back and his body. And that will not take him away from his deen. But you are hasty people, he said. Hadith in Bukhari. Sahaba the early generations, especially the ones in, in Mecca, they went through torture. Sumayya radiallahu anha, the first martyr from the, from the women. Naam, and the family of Yasir, the hardship that they went through, being killed and being tortured before that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect the Muslim to be guided with Tawheed and Sunnah and to hold firmly to their deen. Not being, not straying. Shaykh Ibn Uthaymi rahmallah said, when we read the Quran, if it has no effect on us, if it has no effect on us, then one should be worried. Because the Quran, Allah said, لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على الجبل لرأيته خاشع متصدع من خشية الله. If this Quran was revealed on a mountain, it would crumble. The mountain would crumble for the fear of Allah. We hear the Quran. Such are the similitudes which we found to men that they may reflect. We hear the Quran. But what effect does it have on us? Isn't it time that the believers, their hearts tremble for the fear of Allah? When is it going to be time that we turn back? And that we keep striving and that we remind each other. No one's perfect. Kul ibn Adam khatta wa khayru khatta'ina tawabun. Naam. But we need to keep. Keep going. Innam al-amal bi khawatim. The actions are taken by the end results. Then that's too late then. Hatta idha jaa ahaduhum al-mawt qala rabbi rji'oon. Until death comes to one of them, he says, Oh Lord, let me come back. Let me come back. It's too late, ya akhi. You've had it. You had your chance. It's too late. You can't come back. Rabbi Rji'oon. Kalla. Innaha kalimutun huwa qailuha. It's a statement that he's saying. Wa min waraihim barzakhun ila yawmi yub'athun. And coming towards them. What's after that is what? That barzakh. That time in the grave. Either bliss or punishment. Until the day that they are raised up again. Until the day they are raised, and the first to be raised will be Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Raised up for what? For reckoning. 
for accountability. اليوم عمل وغدا حساب. For every one of us, no one's guaranteed. We ask Allah to protect us. Make us die upon Tawheed and Sunnah. For the fire, the fire is hotter than this world, and more than se- hotter than this, the fire in this world by 70 times. 70 times. Can you be patient upon this? Can we be patient upon the Shaykh, Shaykh Rabi Abdullah in his Sharh of Kitab al Yatisam, Sahih Bukhari? He says, The Yawm al Qiyamah is 50,000 years. Those who don't pay their zakah, they have the wealth that they hoarded will be scold on their bodies for 50,000 years. How you can cope with that, he says. When you are asked to do good deeds in this life, that is multiplied ten times. This is, this is, even though you see difficult or hardship, it's easier now. 50,000 years of hardship or punishment, you do, you revolve the zakah. Sallallahu salama. Sallallahu salama. And those who have camels, who don't pay the zakah or cows, the camels will come and bite them for 50,000 years. The cows, the bulls will haunt them for 50,000 years, trample all over them for 50,000 years. Those who had stole a piece of land, even if it's hand span, will be wrapped around their neck, being punished for that period of time. What is it that we need to be reminded of? A few minutes of that punishment is, is severe. So how about 50,000 years? May Allah protect us. May Allah protect us. لَا يَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيْمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ وَالَّذِي ارْتَضَ لَهُمْ Wallahi, we need Allah to give us tamkeen, to be upon us. We need Allah daily to call upon Him for His mercy. We need Allah to shower His mercy over us. Even you, Rasulullah, said, even me. We are all in need. And life is short. Everyone will reach their reckoning. Ibn al-Qayyim said, if you, there are two pools. There's the hawd in the akhirah and there's the hawd here. A pool there and a pool here. The pool there, if you drink from it, you'll never be thirsty again. That is for who? Ummati, ummati. People of sunnah, people of tawheed who didn't change after me. They didn't change. And in this life, he said, is the pool of the sunnah of Rasulullah You drink from that sunnah, that pool of following the sunnah, then you will drink from the other pool. Ishtima al-Jus al page 85. وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا and he will change their state of fear to that of security. You want security? It is going back to Tawheed. No doubt, security is in there. Ibrahim والسلام, in his da'wah to his people, he called them to Tawheed. And they said to him, you better fear the idols. They're going to harm you. He says, كَيْفَ أَخَافُ مَا أَشْرَكْتُمْ وَلَا تَخَافُونَ أَنَّكُمْ أَشْرَكْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ How can I fear what you have committed shirk with? And you don't fear the ones that you have, the one that you have committed shirk with, Allah subhanahu wa taala. You're not afraid of Allah. Ma lam yunazil bi alaykum sultana. You have no authority of what of, of that which you have brought of shirk, of partners, deities that you have set up besides Allah. Fa ayyul fariqain yahqo bil amnin kuntum taalamun. So which of the two have more right to have security? If you come to know, then Allah answered. الذين آمنوا ولم يلبسوا إيمانهم بظلم أولئك لهم الأمن وهم مهتدون. Those who believe correctly and they do not spoil their belief with what with oppression. يا بني لا تشرك بالله إن الشرك لا ظلم عظيم. That is the oppression, the severest of oppressions is shirk. He said what? The severest of oppression. They don't taint. They don't. Uh, spoil their belief with a shirk. They're the ones who will have security and they're the ones who will be guided. 
ولم يلبسوا إيمانهم الظلم أولئك لهم الأمن وهم مهتدون. Look how beautiful the next verse is. وتلك حجتنا وتلك حجتنا حجة. أهل السنة حجة. إبراهيم عليه السلام هذا حجة. قال الله قال رسول الله نعم. إبراهيم عليه السلام هذا قال الله عند that legislation Allah gave him حجة. وتلك حجتنا آتيناها إبراهيم على قومه نرفع درجات من نشاء إن ربك حكيم عليم الله أكبر أن الشيخ عبد الرحمن السعدي said about that verse الله يرحمه he said and likewise the ulama who go forward with the hujja they're the ones who Allah raises because he said نرفع درجات من نشاء we raise whom we will many levels who is the one Allah raised يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات people of توحيد نعم they're the ones who fear Allah the most إنما يخشى الله من عباد العلماء they're the ones who testify to his oneness شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة أولو العلم they're the ones who are the most just قائما بالقسط الله أكبر they have the حجة so therefore upon us to go forward upon حجة not magic tricks ها huh? That doesn't build anything. Not marches. Not coming on YouTube uh, showing the people that you can cut yellow pages. How is that going to help me to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The time for joking is finished. Khalas. Enough. وَمَا هُوَ بِالْهَزْلِ This is not a joke. This is deen. This is deen of Allah. It's a joke. You want entertainment? Go somewhere else. Don't come to the masjid for entertainment. Masjid is for Allah, ibadah. To Allah, Tawheed Sunnah. And it shows you how misguided these other uh, people are who are not firm upon Tawheed and Sunnah. And you can see all these other speakers who go with them, compromising, covering. Oh, it doesn't matter. We all, because they want the platform. They want the platform. No. If there's one person upon Haqq, Alhamdulillah. It's not about numbers, it's not about how many. Haqq. Be with Ahl Ilm. Ibn Baz, Rahimullah. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, Rahimullah, who we met in Mecca. Two times we broke iftar with him. And we met Sheikh Muhammad Al Anjari there, asking him a question. Asking him about who? Do you know who he's asking about? Ah, he asked about Jama'at al Tabligh. <laughs> this was in about 97 or 9. And Sheikh bin Baz, Rahimullah, said, Huh? Don't go with the jama'ah, except the jama'ah upon sunnah. As for jama'ah tabligh, they're upon bid'ah. They're upon innovation. Straight. MashaAllah. I said to Sheikh Muhammad Anjali after that, what happened, because I recorded it and I gave him the tape. What happened with that tape? He said, MashaAllah, it was so much benefit in Kuwait, that tape. Because clarify to the people that the mashayikh are clarifying the sunnah. They don't want the people to be upon bid'ah. Look what Sheikh bin Baz Rahimullah said, Majmu' Fatawa. فالواجب على علماء المسلمين توضيح الحقيقة ومناقشة كل جماعة أو جمعية ونصح الجميع بأن 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 إيش يسير في الخط الذي رسمه الله لعباده نعم ودعا إليه نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن تجاوز هذا أو استمر في عناد لمصالح لمصالح لمصلحة شخصية أو لمقاصد لا يعلمها إلا الله فإن الواجب التشهير به والتحذير منه الله أكبر حتى يتجنب الناس طريقه الله أكبر الله أكبر It's obligatory says one of the scholars of the Muslims that day نعم that day Advise this and uh, 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 yani, tell every jama'ah and jam'iyyah, advise them that they should be upon the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Na'am, and that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called to. And whoever goes beyond this, trespasses this path of sunnah, based upon his inad, persistent rejection, in probably a personal gain that he wants. And we have many of those who have masalih shakhsiyya. They stay quiet, like Shaitan al-Akhras, the one who stays quiet upon the truth. He doesn't clarify. He doesn't join the good and forbid the evil. He knows it's wrong, but 
doesn't matter. Let's just pass it by because I have to be in the platform. Uh, so he has masalih shakhsiya. And no one knows that except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's wajib to refute them, to expose them for what they are upon. He says, until the people leave what the, the, their path is. Until the people leave their path. This is Shaykh bin Baz, I mentioned that in Majmu'at Fatawa, volume 5, page 203. No. So I said, it doesn't end, they don't enter. وَحَتَّى لَا يُدْخِلْ مَعَهُمْ مَنْ لَا يَعْرِفْ حَقِيقَةِ أَمْرِهِمْ Such that the, the one who doesn't know them, doesn't go with them. Allahu Akbar. And this is why Ahlul Sunnah. Oh, they call you harsh. Shaykh Abdul bin Baz, Allah, his da'wah is the da'wah. Shaykh Rabi Abdullah, is the, his da'wah is the da'wah of Shaykh bin Baz, Allah. Is the da'wah of Shaykh bin Uthaymi, Allah. They warned against Bid'a, didn't they? And they clarified it. So whoever tries to separate that and tries to say that it is different, then they are misguided. The last part of the, of the ayah. They worship me and do not associate partners with me in anything. Subhanallah. This is the way of Ahl Sunnah. Shaykh Sa'di rahimullah said, فَإِنَّهُ وَعْدٌ مَنْ قَامَ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَالْعَمَلَ الصَّالِحِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ Promise from Allah. For those who upon this iman, worshipping Allah alone, and keeping away from shirk, and calling the people away from shirk, it's a promise from Allah for, the, that, for this ummah who's upon that. نعم. وَالتَّمْكِينْ فِيهَا وَالتَّمْكِينْ مِنْ إِقَامَةِ الدِّينِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْأَمْنَ التَّامِ They will have الْأَمْنَ التَّامِ Complete security. Complete security. And he said also, complete, complete security is there upon tawheed and there upon keeping away from innov- shirk, innovations, and keeping away from disobedience. He says, if they're upon tawheed uh, and they keep away from bid'ah, but they fall upon, fall into disobedience, they will not have al-aman at-tam in this life. They will not have al-aman at-tam. Aman at-tam, complete security, comes with tawheed, sunnah, and obedience. Without disobedience. So it's all, I'll just do tawheed, sunnah, and then you are busy gambling, or you're dealing with riba, or you are insulting others on the streets, or you are يعني, unjustly, or you are taking the wealth of that one, and taking a, uh, the muflis. Not like that. Aman tam He mentioned that. And also Ibn Kathir, in his tafsir, he said, Bara ibn Azib anhu said, نَزَلَتْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ وَنَحْنُ فِي خَوْفٍ شَدِيدٍ This verse was revealed while we are so... Uh, we were very frightened in the situation that we were in. They used to carry their weapons in Medina, not trusting anyone that is... Uh, before they get killed, they used to walk around with their weapons with them in Medina. That's the situation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to them this verse. That if they hold on to Tawheed and they keep away from shirk, upon Iman, away from Kufr, upon Sunnah, away from Bid'ah, they hold on to this deen with istiqama, Allah will give them that promise. And Allah gave it to them. They had tamkeen upon the earth, as Ibn Kathir went on to say, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, uh, He blessed them for the deen to be spread far and wide and established. And when that was uh, when groups and parties started coming out after Umar al Khattab was killed because he was the door after he was killed many groups came uh, after Umar Khattab they killed Uthman anhu, those renegades and they're cowards because they killed him in Hajj time when most of the Sahaba were outside going to Mecca and they these are cowards Khawarij are cowards they chose that time when the Sahaba were not around or many Sahaba that have left. And they killed Uthman radhi anhu. And after that, they killed Ali radhi anhu. So don't be surprised when you see the 9-11-7-7, all these, uh, the shoe bomber, the pants bomber, all these bombers, uh, killing innocent people indiscriminately. Don't be surprised. They kill Muslims. They kill non-Muslims who are under a pact between the Muslims and them. Don't be surprised they do that. They killed Ali radhi anhu. 
And they killed the best of the people, the Sahaba And it didn't benefit them to memorize Quran. It didn't benefit them. And their trait is they insult the ulama. They insult the Sahaba. They first insult. Look, Ibn Abbas went to them with a nice cloak. Huh? He wore the best cloak that he had, a Yemeni cloak. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. He came upon them. Oh, what is this, they said, that you are wearing? Belittling him. You see? That's the way of the people of Khawarij. So those who resemble the Khawarij, what is their quality? What is their characteristics? They revile the ulama. Like they are reviling Shaykh Rabi Havidullah. Khawarij and Haddad is all together. Huh? This is the traits of the Khawarij. Your father is Dul Khawaisra. The one who said to the Messenger, وسلم, I'dil ya Muhammad. And the Prophet said, وَمَنْ يَعْدِلِ دَلَمْ أَعْدِلْ Who's going to be just if I'm not just? Huh? They recite the Quran, it doesn't go beyond their throats, doesn't go to their hearts. They don't have understanding. Memorize. What's the point of memorizing if you don't understand what you're saying? Not that Allah may Allah brighten the face of the person who hears my saying and he understands it. Not just memorizes. You want to memorize get, a parrot can memorize. Understanding. Faham. And he says it as it was proclaimed. May his face be brightened, illuminated. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that. Naam, faham, understanding of the aqidah and the manhaj, not compromising that with bid'ah and shirk and superstitions and misguidance and that jam'iyah and this jam'iyah, not with that. Leave all of those groups. Fa'tazil tilka al firaq jami'aha. Even if you are to bite onto the root of the tree, tree while you are upon that, until death reaches you, Hadith Hudayfa, which is tomorrow, inshaAllah, if Allah permits. Wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala khayri 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 khay